What's up Tweener Hits? Welcome back to another Tweener Hit Tennis video today here on our channel and we are back with another video with a pro tennis coach. We have Simone Vagnosi, the coach for Stefano Travaglia, a top 100 player on the ATP circuit. He also coached Marco Cecchinato, who made the semifinal run just a few years ago, who beat Djokovic in the quarterfinal to make the semifinals at that Roland Garros. So I'm very glad that we had to have him on our channel today. So make sure to go check him out. All the links to his social medias are down in the description below. It was a lot of fun talking to him about this year's French Open, what Stefano was like playing Rafael Nadal this year, what's it like to play in COVID times, what it's like to listen to a coach in his perspective like that. He was a former top 200 player as well in his day. He even tells us which Italian player, which young Italian player might have the best chance of winning the most majors out of all of them from Musetti, Berrettini, Sinner, he tells us all about that. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I do apologize the microphone towards me. My voice is a little low, but his is clear and you can hear him through the phone. So make sure to go show him some, uh, make sure to go show Simone some love. And make sure to go, and make sure to go show Simone some love. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to leave a like on this video as well as making sure you subscribe to Tween Your Head Tennis. Let's try to hit 1500 subscribers by the end of this year. If we can do that, that'd be great. So make sure to hit that sub button. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the video. For you, from a coaching standpoint, you just said Stefano just had a great role in Garros. I wanted to get your first experience, first-hand experience of what it was like to coach at the Roland Garros during this pandemic. <laughs> 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 no, it's um, but at least it's um, from the coach side. Uh, it's nothing changed a lot. Okay. Right now, right now it's not uh, it's not that changing so much. It's uh, it's it's different. It's different because you um, you go every night. You stay in the hotel. Mm -hmm. You eat in the hotel every night. So it's it's a little little bit boring. Mm -hmm. uh, boring oh, and uh, different change, but uh, in the court or in the practice, uh, it's uh, it's almost the same. And uh, for sure, in the big tournament like New York or Paris, uh, mm -hmm. um, it's almost more easy to practice uh, without all the fans and uh, and everything. You know, during the Grand Slam, it's a <laughs> million people. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's tough to 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 see the other match to so for us it's a little bit more easy go to a one, another course see some other player and uh, from this side it's uh, it's a little bit better but I prefer with all the fans. Was it was it different for your now training Stefano Travaglia? Was it different for him or did he notice? It being any different playing without fans, did he miss it? Was it from a player's perspective? What did you notice? No, for sure, for sure, the first two weeks in America was was tough. Okay. Because it was uh, was was new situation, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's uh, it's a little, little bit um, different, mm -hmm. and uh, and also in America they they stopped for uh, almost five months, so mm -hmm. it was. Another big problem because yeah. uh, normally, normally they they stop for maximum two months. So it's uh, was everything was was different. But uh, I think Stefan after after three weeks was already, already okay with this situation. Mm -hmm. Would you um would you say that you at least at the French Open? How did you? I'm looking right now at your Instagram and how cold you looked. Sitting in the fans. <laughs> yeah, it was was it was the the first day against Anduka was unbelievable cold. It was really windy. It was uh, it was raining almost all the match. So it was uh, was was really tough. And um, and for for one guy like me that uh, suffer of sinusitis, it's so, so worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but uh, but uh, in the end, when, when you win, when Stefano win, everything was <laughs> was was perfect, no. And uh, but but really was uh, the, the the weather was really really bad in Paris. It was really cold, mm -hmm. and um, and it was good that 
I think not 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 a lot of player uh, there was there were injury mm-hmm. there so because the the situation was was difficult. Wow, I I didn't think of it like that because I think for my listeners who may or may not have played on red clay, when you play in conditions like that, what changes on red clay that may help or make it more difficult for a player to play on that surface? Uh, with this, yeah, with this weather, the ball was really heavy there, mm-hmm. was was not bouncing a lot. So for some player was better, for some player was was worse. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first day, the course was really um, the, the, uh, wet, mm-hmm. so it was uh, a little bit slippery. And uh, for sure, the, um, the the serve, the serve was the. Um, uh, not so much um, important like normal situation because mm. the ball was not bouncing so much, uh, the, so the speed was not easy uh, to make um, a, a big serve. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's on this condition, it's really important how fit you are, okay. how how much uh, you can stay on the court because the the rally. Uh, are really long mm-hmm. so you have to be fit yeah i agree I, when rafa said that the surface favorited novak more and then rafa absolutely destroyed him today when we're recording this what did you what did you think about that the conditions didn't really matter for two players of that caliber but uh, really, when when uh, after the match uh, uh, that Stefano played against Rafa, I I was really uh, not surprised because we know Rafa, yeah, uh, how strong is it? But uh, uh, sens- uh, the sensation of the that Rafa was playing really really good, yeah, and uh, the first round I think he. he he didn't play so good, mm-hmm. and uh, after against Stefano, I think he start to play to hit the ball uh, stronger yeah. and and uh, deeper. So it's um, I had the feeling that uh, Rafa was the the favorite mm-hmm. there. I... So uh, on this court on the Philippe Chatre that is really really big. Not the stadium, but uh, but the, the court is really big. So it's it's tough to make uh, to make a winner with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Rafa have a lot of power. So also in this condition, he can uh, he can make win- winner. Uh-huh. And uh, it's not easy to to make a winner with him. So it's I think uh, Rafa in Paris will be always the favorite, <laughs> or t- uh, <laughs> in any condition. I, I definitely oh. I definitely agree. And how do you how do you teach someone going into a match against Rafa in Paris? What was your mindset like going into that match? What do you tell Stefano? It's like play and hope for a miracle, or is it more try to stay realistic, stick to a game plan? No, we 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 for sure we make a game plan, mm-hmm. and I think uh, everyone on this uh, fifteen years make a game plan against Rafa on clay, but <laughs> on in Paris and didn't work yeah. a lot. But we 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 had a game plan. I think um, uh, Stefano play a really good second set yeah, against yeah. Rafa. And uh, the problem is Rafa. <laughs> no, it's not the game. It's not the game plan. Yeah. And um, but uh, but I, I think um, Stefano was a really a little bit nervous at the beginning of the match because it was the first time again in the flip chatre mm-hmm. and first time also against Rafa. Yeah. That uh, that is different from all the other players because okay. there is no no one playing similar to to Rafa. So it's uh, uh, the first set for sure was was tough, mm-hmm. and in the second set he start to play. To play good and he, he make a good second set mm-hmm. and in the third set when uh, when uh, Rafa is going up in the set it's uh, really tough after to play against him it's uh, if he go break up he, um, early in the set uh, he start to play unbelievable and it's uh, it's tough but um, 
but I think it was a really good experience for Stefano mm. and for sure he, he can take something from the, from this match. No, I, I 100% agree because if you're not taking something away from that match when you play a man who just won his 13th Grand Slam at the same major, I, I, you have to take away all the positives. And I know Stefano lost 6-1, but that second set that I watched, I thought he actually had a shot of winning it at one point. Yeah, yeah, he was he was he was, he was playing was playing really good. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem was that Rafa was um, was winning his uh, uh, serve game easy, mm -hmm. so he was he was um, he was uh, I think he was not nervous on yeah. on the game. He was, he was always under control. Mm -hmm. So uh, that part was uh, for sure. If if he will play against Rafa another time, for sure. Uh, we know something. Maybe we can change something mm -hmm. from the return game mm -hmm. to 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 uh, to try something different. Mm -hmm. But uh, but for sure you have to you have to take something from this match. Like uh, um, how mentally strong is Rafa? Also yeah. in uh, in one match that maybe on the on the table is easy. And uh, on the paper, sorry, and um, it was it was focused on the percent all the points mm -hmm. because uh, because uh, uh, when Stefano was going um, far from the line was receiving far, far mm -hmm. he was playing drop shot was <laughs> when uh, Stefano was uh, close to the line uh, he was serving on the body yeah. so it's uh, he, he was um, mentally so strong he have uh, everything under control on the on the course so this yeah. one it's uh, something that you have to to see and uh, maybe to 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 also to improve no Stefano can improve something watching this this kind of champion of course and you, Stefano is not the only Italian player you have coached. Simone has also coached Marco Cecchinato, who actually made the semifinals of Roland Garros just a few years ago and beat Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinals. Can you talk about that experience working with Marco? Because that's, that's something that you don't see every day, especially from a coach's perspective. That must have been one of the biggest thrills ever. Uh, yes, this one was, uh, was in a... Um amazing experience mm -hmm. for Marco and and for me for sure because uh, I I start uh, not so much time ago to, to coaching this, this one is my sixth year of coaching so mm -hmm. after after three years make semi-final of class and was a big uh, a big result yeah. and was uh, was also surprised because uh, was uh, the first time that Marco win um, a match on the Grand Slam and they in the and they re, he reached the semi final, mm. uh, but for sure um, it's uh, it's something that uh, um, rest in, in my life forever, and uh, but for sure I I'm a better coach now than uh, three years ago because I have three three years more of experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, and maybe after after this um, uh, no, this uh, semi final maybe I, I I make some error yeah. I don't know and for sure I, I will learn I will uh, learn from the, from this so, this error. Yeah, of course. Uh, what was the what was the biggest takeaway or what is the biggest thing you've learned as a coach? Now you're still fairly new compared to other coaches on tour coaching on the professional level. And you're still at a young age. You're 36, correct, or 35? No, right now I'm 37. You're 37. 37. Okay. So, yeah, 37. You're I'm much younger on your profile. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So you're you welcome. don't have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but you, what's the biggest thing you've learned while coaching? Uh, so it's, there is a, there is a lot of a lot of thing for sure. It's uh, a be pat, uh, patience. Really, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we need a lot of patience, huh? yeah. no, and um, no. But for sure, for sure, for me, it's um, 
it's uh, it's good to 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 coach um, uh, some some other player to change the player because I I can learn also from from uh, uh, from them you know something so it's um, every day I learn from the other coach uh, from the other player from my player I try to uh, to learn as much as possible mm. every day so this one it's um, this one it's uh, it's really important for me it's keep improving mm -hmm. it, because it's not just improving the player it's improving yourself so from your perspective you're still you're learning as much as the player sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis yeah yeah you you you, uh, you sometimes you try no you try to to do something sometimes it's uh, it's working sometimes it's not working uh, but uh, with um, you have to be with a player really um, um, I don't know in, in English. Uh, you have to be. Uh, you have um, uh, the Same word. It's, uh, it's um, when, when you are um, hundred percent together and you do, you go in the same way. You know you have okay. to. Uh, so um, it's it's uh, the the problem of the the coach and the players is that they they travel uh, thirty five uh, weeks. Per year yeah. together. So if you if you don't have a good communication yeah. together, it's, it's it's really tough. Yeah. So it's this one is it's really important to have with the player a good communication, and uh, the same goal. Mm -hmm. The same goal is it's really important also. So what was the goal that you set with Stefano at the beginning of this year before COVID hit? Uh, the, the 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 goal was to stay uh, 78 in the world and playing uh, a lot of ATP ATP, ATP tournament. Okay. Uh, so th that one was the, the that one was the goal. The because uh, Stefano last year was the first year that uh, uh, he, he he closed the year at top hundred. Yes. So was. Uh, was the first year that he can play uh, all the year as big tournament. Mm -hmm. So that uh, so was one year that he he, uh, he make experience in the big tournament. He mm -hmm. can practice uh, with a good player, and uh, the goal was 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 that one. With the COVID, everything was changing, uh -huh. but uh, but at least we Stefan was uh, improving a lot. He mm -hmm. played not so much tournament, but he he, he was really constant, uh, constante in, Ita yeah. in Italiano. He was, uh, I don't know in English, though. So. Yeah, consistent. Yeah. Consistent. Yeah. consistent. yeah, consistent. You also recently started your own academy, is that correct? Yes, yes. You uh, have an academy in San Benedetto del Toronto, yes. So, what, so you started that how, how long ago? But uh, this year we this start year. this year with uh, yeah. What made you What made you want to start that? But it was um, uh, was always uh, a goal for me to mm -hmm. make uh, one one academy mm -hmm. uh, to to have the chance to to take some young player mm -hmm. and um, and make uh, put them close to the to the professional player. Mm -hmm. So they they can improve. They can see how how they practice, mm -hmm. how they play the match and everything. So it's um, it's uh, uh, something that if you want to to build something, uh, you have to to have one base mm -hmm. where they can practice, when where they can have a m method mm -hmm. of practicing. So it's uh, it's really important for me. I, because I think, and we talked about this before we started recording, it was, we both played when I was growing up at a match point in Florence, and yeah. I remember when I was there, I remember Filippo Volandri was the top guy at the time, yeah. and exposing players, or exposing kids, I should say, to younger players, uh, and professional yeah. players, it makes it a big difference, because you can, not only for yourself, but you're inspiring a new generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really important for the young player to have uh, to have uh, uh, someone uh, close that he already make this uh, um, this way, you know. Uh, so it's uh, it's a, an example for them and to see them working hard mm -hmm. because some young player they don't know how much you have to work. 
to to be a top hundred player. Mm -hmm. So to 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 have one top hundred player that um, wake up six in the morning, going in the club eight in the morning to <laughs> make just the warm up is really important. Yeah, I agree. So the, the, that that it's um, for the young player. It's uh, it's I think it's important key yes. to to try something. Yes. I totally agree, especially now with uh, so much young Italian talent, Yannick Sinner, Lorenzo Musetti, um, even uh, Trevisan with uh, her run at uh, Roland Garros yeah. this year. It seems like Italy just is now becoming a powerhouse for tennis. Like in the past, you had Seppi, Volandri, you had so many names, but now it's the young kids. Yeah, yeah. Now it's. I think it's the best moment for the for the male. For the male, it's the best the, the best moment of tennis in Italy. Wow. We have we have a lot of young player. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of top hundred player. Mm -hmm. So for sure, uh, for for the young player now, it's more easy to to believe. Yes. To be to believe uh, to believe uh, to be a top hundred player or mm -hmm. top fifty. With um, I think when uh, when Marco reached the semi final in the semi uh, the Roland Roy and he reached the top twenty, it was really important for the um, for the other player because the other player start to believe that also them can yeah. make this uh, this kind of thing. So and everything like it's like. Um, uh, a, ru a ruota is uh, in yeah. Italian. I don't know. Uh, uh, so everyone now in Italy believe that uh, they can be they can be the one. Yeah. So, yeah. With Matteo Berti is top ten, yeah. is top ten. Uh, Sonny got top fifty, and uh, so uh, they, they they were playing all in the challenger in Italy. They will play together, and now if you see one top ten, one top fifty, so. Everyone now start to to believe on himself, and they don't see so difficult this this way. Mm -hmm. I agree. If and I'm gonna put you on the spot right now. Between besides Stefano, between Berrettini, Sinner, and Musetti, who do you think has the best chance of winning a Grand Slam first? But I think uh, really um, um, for sure right now I think in Matteo is the the one that is closer because he already he already plays in Sarah, he's top ten player, so I think he he can he can reach a, a final mm -hmm. in in the Grand Slam. For sure in the in the future I think Sinner is the is the one that can win a lot of Grand Slam. Oh wow! I think, I think it's uh, uh, Musetti is still is still younger uh -huh. than 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 Yannick, but uh, for sure he, have, he, he he can have an unbelievable future. So right. it's um, like like I said before, it's um, unbelievable moment for the Italian uh, mm -hmm. tennis. And I, I think that's the perfect way to wrap up this interview. So, Simone, Tarite, Tutto, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. If you guys want to check out him, his, uh, his Instagram, his group, Stefano, everyone, as well as his academy, I'll leave links to those in the description below. Make sure to go follow their adventure. It's a lot of fun to watch them and Simone travel and be a part of the tennis world. So I really thank you for coming on and grazie per tutto. Thank you, Philip. No thank worries. You. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah, ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao.